This is going to be a look at some Odafe Owe film from the Ravens' week one win over the Texans. I often talk about edge players or defensive linemen playing with a lot of force. My other saying that I used to use with kids that we would coach is play downhill. Owe looked like he was playing downhill. We wanted to tell our kids, make the offense feel like they're playing on a 10-degree incline, and we're playing on a 10-degree downhill incline. Imagine that. I've played on crooked fields before. I don't know if you have, or I've coached on crooked fields before. It's difficult for, for to be the offense and try to go uphill and, and move the football and move people. Owe looked like he had some extra force to him on Sunday. Three quarterback hits, I think. Someone credited him with seven quarterback pressures. I don't know you know, where I found those numbers or saw those numbers, but um, he applied pressure. He was attacking. I did not see the same guy that we saw at times last year in 2022. He looks more consistent on a play-by-play -play basis. He looks like a guy who, well, there's one play, they just throw him on late. I think he's off the field. They bring him on late, and he attacks, and I think he gets a quarterback hit. Let's get to the film. I put out a film of uh, David Ojabo earlier in the day, doing a lot of defensive videos to start. This is a third and 19 early fourth quarter. I think this is all way up to the top. Ojabo down to the bottom side. Ojabo and Matabike is going to run that twist stunt. Matabike ends up on the wrong side. This is all way right now after an inside move, locked up with Tunsil. Watch the closing speed that he shows here. You can't plan for this when there's an outside linebacker that can run a 4-4 in open field, and he can just track down your quarterback or even anyone else who has the football. Elite athleticism for a guy who's playing out there. I think he's showing the talent level that warranted the Ravens drafting him. The rest of this is going to be end zone angle footage. Another situation where he's going to try to hawk down the quarterback. I'm not sure if this goes down necessarily as one of his quarterback hits, but uh, it should. You know, and I like how he holds up at the end. He doesn't wrap up and sling or wrap up and slam the quarterback. He pulls his arms back, well trained, unplanned. If you ask me, quarterback play or unplanned pressures is the type of thing that I think Owe is going to bring to the table more so than Ojabo and Clowney. Some of these situations where, first of all, it's pretty cool here that we've got our D tackles, Pierce and Matabike lined up on the edge, and then Ojabo and Owe on the inside. Ojabo does a spin, ends up picking the center and falling down. Owe folds over the top, very similar to a quarterback hit he had against Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, in 2021 in Denver. Our left side, offense is left against Tunsil. Ball was out quick, so it's inconsequential in terms of always impacting the play, but it shows you the level of athlete that Tunsil's dealing with and, and plants a seed in his mind, like this guy's pretty quick. Doesn't seem to be playing tilted over as much. There was times last year where I thought he was like, tilted down. His head wasn't pointed down, like his face mask wasn't looking at the ground necessarily, but he seems to be playing at a good pad level, but also not too upright. This is the one I'm talking about. He came on the field late. I think he was off the field to play before. Watch him just destroy the center, push him back. The strength looks better. The speed looks better. The burst closing speed looks two levels better, if you ask me. I love everything about the way that he played, except the fact that, you know, he didn't get a sack. Roquan got a sack. Patrick Queen got a sack. I think Ardarius got a sack. Matabike got a sack, along with like three or four penalties, something like that. But I thought Owe was the guy who was most consistently disruptive towards what the offense was trying to do. Our left side, again, going up against Tunsil. I thought there was two plays where Tunsil could have potentially been called for a hold. This one's a quarterback hit. Actually takes Stroud to the ground. Additionally, this is one that I think Adam Archuleta, one of the announcers, talked about as Stroud's got to put the ball in a different place. But if you watch this, Roquan's kind of in the window. For, I mean, he can't throw this ball through Roquan. He can throw it above him, obviously. And he kind of does, but to the left. He can't throw the – you can see the receiver's feet, I think, right there. You can just barely see his right foot. Couldn't throw this ball – through Roquan, had to kind of throw it around him. And unfortunately for the Texans, that took it away from the receiver. One of those situations where immediate judgment or the need to be immediate with our judgment, it, you know, in my opinion, doesn't give us great evalu evaluation. Because Roquan's in the window here. Stroud throws the ball where the receiver was. Roquan's got an opportunity to tip it, maybe, maybe intercept it. It's not going to be thrown right to his chest. It's going to be thrown up high. 
Point is, Roquan's in the window. And then, oh, by the way, Owe is there to hit the quarterback right as or just after the ball is thrown. Everything was coordinated well this week for the defense. We're going to need more of that against the Bengals, obviously. But you can see the ball's just just out, and Owe's already got him wrapped up. So, that therefore, he's not getting a penalty for it. He had an impact against the run, against the pass, mostly pass plays here to let you just to let you know. Other view, he's on the right side, again, against Tunsil. I can't wait to see our matchup against the Bengals with Owe. His ability to do things unplanned like this, chase down Stroud. I mean, if you're Burrow or any quarterback for that matter, and that guy's chasing you, you don't have eight steps. <laughs> you might have three, maybe four, before he's going to get you. There was two plays like this where Owe had someone trying to cross his face, and he's doing a better job of getting hands on the guy, or maybe even one time he even kind of like put his hand out and grabbed the guy's shoulder pads. I got nothing wrong. I got no problem with it. It's what the Patriots used to do. They used to chip guys going out of the backfield. They would chip guys running underneath the hide concept. So I'm talking about like this tight end here. And they're leaving Noah Brown in to mess with Owe, and he's just a speed bump. He can't even, you know, impact him at all. I don't get into the whole, like, you know, top 10, top 5, but if we get this version of Owe throughout the whole season, we'll be in great shape. Because I thought Jadavion Clowney played well as well. And like I said, I did a video on Ojabo earlier with his second strip sack of his career. I thought he played fantastic. This is the one that I'm talking about. It's a hide concept, Matabike's sack. I call it a hide concept. You know, different people call it, you know, whatever they want to call it, bluff. I don't care. Receiver Noah Brown, who's a big physical guy trying to run out into the flats. Stroud booting off of it. So there's conflict created here for Owe. What's he do? Does he go, you know, at the quarterback and then leave this guy untouched? Or does he go down and collision this guy hard, but then leave Stroud kind of to have more time out there on the edge? He kind of tries to do both. He's, he's veering upfield already, making contact with Noah Brown. It's behind the line of scrimmage. So I think it's legal, number one. Number two, if it is illegal, I don't care. I would coach my guys to do the same thing. If you give us the opportunity to get free shots on people, put hands on them, let's do it. That hide concept running right by our super physical and strong outside linebacker, let's take that free shot. Let's put our shoulder pad into the bottom of the guy's chin and see how many more times he wants to run that route. I thought it was a great play by Matabike, who was a force on Sunday when he wasn't getting penalties. But I thought this was a really underrated play by Owe. And additionally, I think you've got a nice job by Roquan trying to cover up this tight end. He made Roquan made a very similar play on the sack by Patrick Queen on the first possession of the game that was a fourth and one. Owe again off the offense's left side. Attacking to the outside, trying to dip underneath of Tunsil. Great play by Harrison. I thought Harrison did a nice job out there, too. The boundary generally is where he was located, if you're not sure what I mean. There's the ball on the hash. He's the boundary side outside linebacker. Owe is the field side inside linebacker. One of the reasons why Harrison can, continues to stick around, he can play inside linebacker in a pinch, play special teams, drops out in the passing window to the boundary, but we're talking about Owe. Tunsil's kind of got him locked up. Owe might need a second you know, move off that rip. Trying to, trying to dip around him, get his hips out. Doesn't work against Tunsil. In this case, Tunsil's a, a incredibly high-level left tackle. He's over here on the other side on this play. End zone angle. I mean, that type of athleticism to be able to win to the top side on a run play and then dive back inside. He's not folding underneath. Not folding underneath. He's actually going to the top side and then Jay in this back in. Yeah, it's Singletary. It's not Pierce. I don't know about you. I was surprised Pierce only got the ball 11 times. I thought he would have a little bit, I don't want to say more success. I thought there would be moments where Pierce showed you what he's capable of, and that didn't happen that often. Away with first contact, and then, of course, who else? Roquan Smith there to finish it off. The level of athleticism we have, not just our two inside backers, but Owe, Clowney's a super athlete. Hamilton, Ojabo. We've got fantastic athletes at the line, inside linebacker, outside linebacker position. Nickel defender, maybe we're not as athletic if we've got our Darius or Arthur Malay out there in terms of size, speed, and explosiveness. But we're fast and we're mean. And, and Owe's one of those guys, when he gets there, when he arrives, he arrives with some attitude. 
This time lined up over to tight end. Offense is right, defense is left, into the boundary this time. Harrison's to the field. I mean, you can't deal with him with a tight end. And by the way, M Michael Pierce, I mean, the guy is a monster. A couple of those stretch and zone concepts, Pierce is just winning to the front side where so many times you see guys get cut off, meaning reached to the play side. Matabike gets down block. Pierce is in the window. Oway, Pierce, clean it up. We've got a very strong and mean group of guys in the front seven or front six if it's nickel. This is the uh, pursuit again, the first play I showed you. Look, you let me know in the comment section how well you thought Oway played. I thought this was an A-plus game for him. I thought it was an A-plus game in terms of, but that's not Oway, it's Spot Shadow, by the way. That's Oway there. Uh, I thought it was an A-plus game for him. I thought this is one of the best games I've ever seen him play in terms of the impact that he had on a play-by-play -play basis and how present he was. Dealing with a guy like Laramie Tunsil, you know, one of the best in the league, clearly. The rest of the Texans' O-line, they've got injuries, just depleted their group there for sure. That impacted the game. But Owe was dealing with Laramie Tunsil and had an impact. Yeah, he lined up over the center sometimes. They, they inverted the D-tackles and, and OLBs at times, like I showed you on the one play. I'm excited for Owe because I didn't like all the criticism that he got last year. But this, to some extent, you know, you're a professional athlete. You're getting paid millions of dollars. And, well, maybe not yet, but he will be. And, and you, we want you to succeed. We want you to play well because we want our team to win. So when you're a Ravens fan, you got high standards, and I understand it. But it was tough to watch a young guy get criticized last year so much when I thought there was times where he played well, really well. But I didn't think that we had ever seen 60 minutes of sustained, high-level explosiveness and pursuit like this yet. I think, it's pro I think it could be the best game we've seen him play from – from a 60-minute standpoint, kind of reminded me of some of those boxers and fighters that can keep a high-level pace throughout the whole fight, and they just kind of wear people down. The problem for NFL offenses is we've got more than one guy like that. Roquan Smith, Patrick Queen, Owe, Ojabo, Clowney, Hamilton. We've got a, a number of guys that are that size football player that can impose their will as a group collectively. And that's what we need to go into Cincinnati next week and get a win. It's going to be fun to try to break down the Browns film against the Bengals. I've tried to put out a ton of content the last two days about last week's game. I'll do one more video on the defense this week. It'll be about Roquan and Patrick Queen. Hopefully come out Wednesday afternoon. Appreciate you guys checking out the videos this week. Let me know what you enjoyed about the way I broke down the content or, or broke down the games or what you didn't like about the content. And if you think other Ravens fans would enjoy this Odafe Owe film study, please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it out on social media to help this content get more reach.